Hello everyone, let's play some Space Quest, why not? This is Roger Wilco's second adventure. And it's called... Vohol's Revenge! I think Sierra's got a thing for having revenge in a second title in the series. Well, this game was never remade. So, I'm playing the original, because that's the only version. It's 160 by 216 colors EGA. As you will recall, in our last chapter, you had just foiled the Syrians' fiendish plot to rule the galaxy by using the Star Generator as their weapon of destruction. You became a hero by saving countless lives and returning the Star Generator technology into safe hands. Life was beautiful. Oh, that doesn't sound so bad. But heroes come and go, and people soon forget. Your celebrated herodom slowly fades, leaving you, once again, a janitor. The promotion to head janitor was no consolation, especially since you are the only member of the janitorial staff. Nor was the transfer to Orbital Station 4. Sweating like a pork beast in a pressure suit, while relocating space debris in z zero gravity just wasn't your idea of a good time. Life sucks. Again. Well, such is the nature of Herodon, Roger. Xenon Orbital Station 4, that's where we work. And a shuttle is arriving. No uh, Roland MT32 music for this uh, game, unfortunately. Well, this is the only game in the series where you'll have to suffer through uh, the bleep version. Okay, well, in the first two games, uh, or at least the original version of the first game, not in the remake, uh, you could actually name your own character, which means you can uh, go through life by your own name, although I'm just going to use Roger Wilco for uh, consistency's sake. And... Actually, uh, even though you might think that this means that the name Roger Wilco was introduced in Space Force 3, that's not true, because if you leave it blank, it will automatically pick Roger Wilco. I am, however, not leaving it blank, because I have an issue that if I quit the game and then come back and restore, um, the name will be gone if I leave it blank here, so I'd rather not do that. Not sure if that's a problem with the game, or if that's just because I'm playing it uh, using Scum VM. Could be either one, I guess. Orbital Station 4 is one of many orbiting Xenon, your home planet. It is a transfer point for travelers seeking transportation to the various planets in the Urnon system. Now here they switch back to Urnon being a system. In the manual of the first game, they seem to suggest it was a galaxy, even though they also were talking about the urn and sun, so whatever. I don't think the writers of the manual really knew the difference between a solar system and a galaxy. As we begin this chapter of our story, we find you, Roger Wilco, Ace Janitor, doing what you do best. Or well, Ace Janitor. I never got the impression that uh, he was that good at it, but anyway. And what we do best is apparently sweeping. Why you'd need to sweep the outside of a space station. Seems a little bit weird, but anyway. A beep emanates from your wristwatch. You release your grip on the broom. And there it goes. Bye-bye, broomy. We hardly knew ye. The broom floats away, never to be used again. That makes the third one this week. Wait till your boss finds out. Well, uh, I guess we lose more uh, janitorial supplies this way. And it's the start of a new game, and we're outside in space in a spacesuit. You're working outside Xenon Orbital Station 4. This area hasn't been completed yet. You have been sent out here to remove construction debris and space dust. Space dust, yeah, because space is really known for being dusty. 
well, at least the construction debris part uh, makes uh, sense. Well, one thing uh, we need to uh, think about here is this game is called Vohol's Revenge. Who's Vohol? I mean, this isn't like Police Quest 2 where we know who Jesse Baines is and uh, he's gonna kidnap the girlfriend and stuff like that because Roger doesn't have a girlfriend. He won't have a girlfriend until Space Quest 5, poor fellow. Um, but Vohol was actually the name on the um, data cartridge and he didn't seem like a bad guy, so why would he want to uh, have revenge against us? So maybe he's having revenge against the Sarians. Well, these and more questions will be answered during the course of this Let's Play, of course. Uh, well, our watch was beeping, so let's uh, see what uh, it wants from us. Oh, there's a blinking light, it's probably the source of the beep, and three buttons. There are three, H, C, and T. Well, that didn't tell us anything we didn't already know. A light flashes on the watch's upper left corner. It means you have a caller waiting. If you try and get more detail about the buttons, just press F10 or a button. The game gets up a tea with you. Well, let's see, what does the H button do? Your horoscope for today. Keep up the good work. Today could bring that big promotion you think you deserve. Don't take any wooden buckazoids. That's a very useful function for a watch on a spacesuit. Uh, how about the T button? Time, 11.26, temperature, minus 47 degrees Celsius. That's actually quite warm for space, but anyway. I guess since we're in contact with the space station, we have uh, some residual heat from there. And uh, C then, I guess, will be communications. Roger Wilco, got in here on the double. You've got a master cleanup and the shuttle was just returned. One of the passengers got spacesick on the way down. Besides, you should have been done out there an hour ago. Gotta move on. His boss is Scottish, didn't you know that? With that, the image disappears. And so does the watch. Okay, well, we, I guess that means we need to go inside. And yay, we got one point. Um, let's um, speed things up a little bit. Where's the entrance here, though? Is there a door? No, there's no door. Look at space. You gaze out into the near nothingness, the billions and billions of worlds apparent to the eye, make you realize how truly insignificant you are. Especially true in the case of Roger. I haven't even commented on his name yet, even in the... Well, I had some trouble with my keyboard there. Um, on his name yet, even in the previous Let's Play. Of course, it's a play on the common radio parlance, in terms Roger and Wilco which actually do not mean the same thing, even though some people think they do. Roger means message received, while Wilco means will comply. My keyboard is acting up, which uh, is not a good thing when playing a text-based game. Oh well. Hey, you can walk on the ceiling and the wall, and this is actually the exit. You're whisked away to the airlock chamber. Stand by for decontamination. Yes. There we go. Now we're inside and decontaminated. And there's our regular outfit. We're not going to spend the entire game wearing a spacesuit. Well, we'll uh, continue in the next video. So I can fix my keyboard trouble. Welcome back. We're in some kind of airlock or locker room or something. Let's take a look. This is the airlock chamber. From here you can gain extravehicular access. Spare suits hang on the back wall. Some lockers are mounted on the side wall. Well, we don't want to go the entire um, game in a spacesuit. Uh, space I think he actually 
um, die, or at least get a game over if you try and leave here we're still wearing your spacesuit. So let's change into our regular clothes. There we go. I look more like ourselves now, with the great purple boots. Um, and let's take a look at the lockers. The lockers are all closed. There's nothing too interesting about them. Well, let's open the one that's ours. What's in it? You bravely peer into the locker to find a cubics room puzzle and your athletic supporter. Oh, well, we want both of those. A cubics room? Hmm. And supporter. Um. The cubics room puzzle has made you look more stupid. Uh, has made sorry, has made you look stupid more than usual. I guess it's sort of like a a Rubik's cube. Another lawsuit waiting to happen. I think Sierra got sued over the Space Quest games more than any other series of games. I can't do the look at thing with the arrow key trick here. Apparently, no, I can. Show my um, inventory, but I can't just point at stuff and then look at it. What the hell is this supporter, actually? This is your athletic supporter. Without close inspection, you notice it to be well used. In other words, it smells bad. And, yeah, actually that's a important point. You can't smell stuff here. You can trust me to let you know when something stinks. Let's be nice, close the locker. Well, let's uh, head on out. Guess that's our boss. It's about time you got here, Roger Wilco. Have for a shuttle bay on the double. I'm warning you, you're on your last leg around here, bud. One more screw up and your history. He then orders the transportation officer to send you directly to the shuttle bay and nowhere else until the job has been completed. Gee, thanks for trusting us. An interesting uh, looking place here. You're in the transportation control room of the orbital station. The room is a basque with activity and as technicians monitor ZO Xenon Orbital Station 4 operations. A pneumatic transport tube is accessible from the walkway above. The technicians are seated in front of monitoring consoles. They look like your average screw types. I don't think you can look separately at the ones up here. Or if you do, I have no idea. Or, uh, or if you can, I have no idea how to phrase that. I think you can talk to some of these people. The chief's not happy with you, Roger Wilco. The man says, you better get over to the shuttle bay soon. By the way, you still owe me 20 buckazoids. You'd best cough it out soon. Uh, nice talking to you. I'll leave now. You better get moving, Roger Wilco. And don't forget that 20 buckazoids. I guess there's only one you can actually talk to. All right, we'll get moving. This looks like an uh, interesting mode of transportation. A pneumatic transport tube is accessible from the walkway above. The tube is made of plexiglass with a transporter inside it. The physical principles involved are not unlike those which transport a spitwad through a straw. Okay, great analogy there. And as promised, we get sent straight to the shuttle where we have to clean up some muck. You're in the orbital station shuttle bay. A shuttle, fresh from a passenger drop-off on Xenon, is refueling for its next trip. A pneumatic transport tube is accessible from the walkway. A refueler replenishes the shuttle supply. Let's look at the shuttle. The shuttlecraft is your standard 10-passenger short commute vehicle. It was primarily designed to ferry people and supplies between orbital stations, Xenon, and other orbiting spacecraft. How about the refueler? Oh. 
I'll have to get closer to it, I guess. It's not much to look at. The refueler is just a rectangular structure with which bears a pressure gauge and a hose outlet for the transfer of fuel. The hose is currently hooked to a shuttle. Can we look at the gauge? The gauge seems to register about three quarters full. The refueling is ni nearly complete. That's not your job to worry about, though. That's not a good idea. Being as unskilled as you are, you would probably cause some sort of fiery catastrophe. Leave it alone. It's automatic anyway. Oh, but I wanted to see the fiery catastrophe. I mean, what fun is a Space Quest game if you can't cause a fiery catastrophe or two? Oh well, let's just go inside, do our job, and clean up this sick from the dude who, uh, well, got sick. You enter the shuffle and start sniffing around for the mess you must clean. You are surprised to find that the shuttle is not empty. There are two extremely ugly suckers walking towards you. Hey, what the... Your favorite expletive here. I'll leave, leave you to fill that in for yourself. Bow! Thwack! Bink! Thut! Turned into a Batman comic all of a sudden. Your protest is cut short as two interstellar ruffians proceed to thump you unconscious. Everything fades. Time passes. It has a tendency of doing that. More time passes. Yep. Still f obeying the laws of physics here. A strange dream turns into the realization that you are being shaken and talked to by a voice unfamiliar to you. A dull ache triggers a distant memory of a scuffle in which you were the focal point. Upon awakening from your forced rest, it becomes quite apparent that you aren't in Kansas, uh, Zenon anymore. You find that you are being held upright and under physical restraint from both sides by, you guess, the galactic goons you met on the shuttle. As you try to struggle free, you notice that your hands are tied behind your back. Hmm. Who could be behind this? As the eyes dial into focus, you make out an oddly disfigured being seated before you. Could it be? A sagging mass of flesh that appears to have been human at one time. Tubes and wires extend from his body, leading to machines which keep him alive. Suddenly, his visage stirs, stirs and he begins to speak. What could he want from us? Well, well. Did we have a nice nap? I thought we would have to resort to drastic measures to wake you. Oh well. Seems like he's disappointed that he hadn't. Welcome to my humble fortress, Roger Wilco. The name's Vohol. Sludge Vohol. I was a genius behind the star generator con when it was still in the concept stages. Now, um, if you pay attention, this is not the same Vohol as the one from the data cartridge. That one was called Slash Vohol, not Sludge. It was to be my ultimate war weapon until some sissy pan scientists decided it would be better used saving lives rather than destroying them. What a waste of technology. Excuse me if I sound bitter. Anyway, you ruined my Sarian operation and I was going to use the star generator to make Xenon pay for what they did to me. They were going to know my wrath in a big way. You somehow managed to change all that. Oh, I suppose I should have known better than to use those mental midget Sarians. That's not the point, however. You are responsible, and you shall pay. Besides, I have another plan, and you'll not be around to foil it. I have devised a plan so horrible, so frightening, so diabolical, that no one will be able to stop me. Observe my latest creation. It looks like a guy in a suit. I intend to infest your planet with thousands of these genetically engineered door-to-door life-insurance salesmen. I will at last reap sweet revenge from the scientific community that mocked me. Life insurance salesman? That bastard! 
My plan was to kill you, but I've had a change of heart. <laughs> Get it? He peers down at the hoses protru uh, protruding from his chest and connected to a life support system. Forgive me. I'm a kidder. Yeah, sure. I've decided I would get much more enjoyment watching you suffer. My associates will escort you to the surface of Labian, where you will perform many painful hours of manual labor in my mines. Be seeing you. In other words, he's hurt us, and he intends to continue hurting us. An injection renders you unconscious. Again, your drugged carcass is loaded onto a shuttle. Upon reviving, you look through the viewing port to see Vohol's massive asteroid fortress getting smaller. I want an asteroid fortress that looks so cool. After touching down on a giant landing platform, you are ushered to a hovercraft waiting to transport you to the mining site. Utter despair sets in. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any way out of this situation. Nice flying animation there. Pretty damn advanced for uh, 1988. Uh, that's not a good sound. Uh-oh. Oh, great. I suppose we're out of fuel. Way to go, Gorf Brat. Don't blame me. It was your turn to fill up. You're always forgetting to do it. Wait till the master finds out. You're in big trouble. Hey, don't talk to me that way, you slime bucket. I filled it last time, dip. The argument between the two guards is cut short as gravity reasserts itself. Like with Wily E. Kyori, I think it likes to wait. Crash! Good thing that guard broke your fall. He doesn't look too happy about it, though. Well, somehow we miraculously survived that. We'll have to find out where we are and what to do in the next video. Hey, did you see that guy behind that bush? Ominous. Welcome back! Last time on Let's Play Space Quest 2, Roger was captured by Sludge Vogelhall, and then managed to make a miraculous escape by uh, these two guards being stupid, forgetting to fuel up their hovercraft. And now we are somewhere. And now, the continuation. Let's see where we are. You seem to be in a rather exotic forest. The grove here is unlike anything you are used to. On the ground lies the wreckage of the hovercraft you crashed in. Nearby are the bodies of your former captors. What's that beeping? Can I listen to it? You hear a high-pitched beep. It seems to be emanating from the wrecked hovercraft. Hmm. I don't trust that. The hovercraft has been reduced to a mound of twisted wreckage. Everything that was straight is bent. Everything that was bent is benter. There appears to be no salvageable parts. I look in the hovercraft. Everything inside is twisted and bent. You do notice a button with a flashing light next to it. It seems to be emitting a high-pitched beep. Well, what happens if we push the button? You press the button, the light goes dark, and you no longer notice the high-pitched beep. Well, that's better. Uh, well, I think that's actually a homing beacon, and if you wait too long to do that, um, they'll come and uh, catch you. Well, let's take a look at the guards. They look a little bit worse for wear. The guard appears to be less thick than you remember him. Many of his formerly contained body fluids seem to be at large. Ew. Well, um... Search him. You search the grotesque body and find a small, thin magnetic card. It looks like a key card. You seem to recall seeing one somewhere in the past. 
I'm not, not sure if they're talking about Space Coast 1 there or something else. Um, you search the grotesque body and find nothing. Nope, no more uh, key cards to be found. Actually, we need to uh, get that card. It does, that's not automatic. Um, I almost forgot about that. Well, uh, hmm, there's a conspicuous square on the floor there. Looks like it could be a trap. The ground is soiled. Eh, okay. Trap? Trap? What trap? I don't see a trap. Hey, do you guys see a trap? I didn't think so. You must be mistaken. None of us sees a trap. Okay, I guess it must be sla safe then. Ah! You fall to the bottom of the concealed pit. You might have survived the fall had you not come into contact with the several 30 centimeter long spikes planted vertically along the bottom of the pit. Another senseless tragedy. You can help prevent this. Vote yes on lobotomies for adventure game designers. Thank you for playing Space Quest 2, Roger Wilco. You've been most entertaining. Indeed. For some reason F7 doesn't work here. Uh, oh, I have to use the menu. So, in other words, don't trust the narrator. Uh, well, let's see uh, where else we can go from here. Or we can just stay here and dance. The foliage here is much too dense for you to pass through. Okay, we'll uh, take another way around. Okay. Ah, uh, I guess we'll have to find another way off this screen. Damn, I wish I remembered this better. Oh, I don't trust those. Eh, uh, we'll just stay over this. Nope, I was right not to trust them. Holy jeez, boy, that mushroom thing sucked you clean up. You can't move a muscle, nor see a speck of light. You begin feeling waves of tingling, warmth, and moisture. moisture. Suddenly, it's not so bad in here. Wow, check out the colors, dude! Your body and mind enjoy the short-lived buzz that is a side effect of the lethal poison you now marinate in. You are oblivious to the end. Not a bad way to go, actually. But it sure is early in the game. I had high hopes for you. They said, who? Roger Wilco, not a chance. That jump won't last 20 minutes. I said, no way, Roger Wilco isn't that lame. So anyway, uh, don't make me look stupid too. It has been a pleasure watching you play Space Quest 2. Okay, well that uh, didn't work so well. Let's see if we can avoid these uh, deadly shrooms. Uh, I guess not. I should have prepared this better. Well, I guess we'll try going north. Although I don't trust it there either, because we saw that creature behind uh, the shrub um, over there. Oh, and there he is again. Hmm. Suddenly, somewhere to the east, you hear a twang, followed by a high-pitched shriek. Well, it would help be helpful if we uh, could find out where that's coming from. So maybe if we uh, climbed a tree, uh, we could uh, get a better vantage point. You're in a strange-looking stand of woods. Do we even know what planet this is? It's actually called Labian. I'm not sure if it's been mentioned in the game yet. Uh, try and climb the tree. This is as uncool as uncool can be. It looks like you've adhered yourself to this tree like a fly to flypaper. And speaking of insects, here comes a swarm now. 
you hear something. It sounds not unlike the hovercraft you were wrecking. That's not a problem, because we are already dying. Of insects. Wow, these guys are efficient. You'll be proud to know that you have filled today's n nutritional requirements for many of the local carnivorous insects. Adventuring is not always pretty. Well, that didn't go so well. Yeah, and you can sometimes hear the hovercraft coming. Let's just check out where the twang is coming from. It looks like it's here. Looks like the critter we saw is now... Um, Hanging upside down there, you're in another area of the forest. The grove seems to be getting heavier here. The little creature caught in the snare has thick-looking pinkish skin. He looks to be less than a meter tall. He doesn't seem too thrilled with his predicament. Well, I can understand that. Well, let's uh, untie the poor creature. And he runs off. Before disappearing through a tiny hole in the brush, the little creature gives you a long glance. Probably to say thank you. Can we get the rope? Without the weight of the little creature on the rope, it is not within your reach. Too bad. Can we follow the creature? Uh, I'm just going to save here, just in case. Nope, apparently he can pass through, because he's tiny, but we cannot. Um, looks like there's a path up there going left. So let's check that out. I sort of want the hovercraft sound to come on this screen. There we go. You hear something. It sounds not unlike the hovercraft you wrecked in. Well, they must be looking for me then, so we'd better hide. Phew! That was a tense moment. Thor's fuck failed to spot you and is off to search elsewhere. That gives you points. That's why I wanted to hide from the uh, hovercraft. Now let's see what's up here. There is, uh, huh? This is another clearing in the otherwise heavily wooded area of the forest. There is a plateau near the back. What the hell is that thing? No, that's something I have with me. I also have an order form, apparently. Uh, where did I get that? What's on the plateau? It is like the other areas, only raised up a little. A mailbox sits up here. There, a mailbox in the middle of the jungle. Well, that makes a lot of sense. The mailbox looks typical for a mailbox. There's a slot, a tray, and a sign. The sign says Radical Express, when it totally, no doubt for sure, has to be there while previously. Okay, well that sounds interesting. We'll check it out in the next video. Welcome back. We found a mailbox in the middle of the jungle. That seems a bit odd. And we have an order form. That's pretty much the only thing we could possibly use for the mailbox. Let's read that order form. This is an order form you removed from a magazine for free for a free labian terror beast mating whistle. It's ready to be mailed. Hmm. Well, then we uh, can mail that, I suppose. I guess that we had it with us from the beginning of the game. Always pays to check out your inventory when you start the game, because sometimes you already have some stuff. I want you to make note of the fact that it says here that the that the whistle is free. It does not cost money. This will be important at some point. Not in this game, but later. Uh, well, let's uh, mail that form. 
You drop the order form into the box. The mailbox hums and buzzes for a while. Then, an object of some sort drops into the tray at the base of the box. The machine goes silent. Hmm. What did it drop? The tray is actually a small indentation in the lower part of the machine. It is currently bearing what looks to be a whistle. Wow, that is fast deliver delivery. Let's see what we have here now. The whistle is usual looking. Not sure if that has any bad effects. If you do it now, uh, let's try it. Nothing happened. Well, um, I guess there aren't any labian terror beasts nearby. Well, we are on Labian, so this may be useful at some point. I wish real-life delivery was that fast. Oops! Hey, that didn't even kill us. Thanks to some fancy footwork, you are now picking yourself up off the ground after barely surviving a fall down a small cliff. Hmm, what do we have here? Some kind of blue growth? Well, I don't trust the growth here. The ground looks like everywhere else, with the exception of some growths, which look like spores or pods. You need to be closer. I don't trust that for one minute. This close enough, damn you. The spores are light blue and bulb-shaped. They seem to be loosely attached to the ground. Uh, are they safe? No, they're not. You seem to have kicked one of these strange little spores. Your kick caused some spores to open and spray a fine powder into the air. As a result, you are paralyzed from head to toe, unable to move a single muscle. Um, are we gonna die or what? Due to paralysis, you're only capable of displacing air. Uh, hello? Wake up. I think you're supposed to get back up, but... How long is it supposed to take? You know, if we aren't going to get back up, a game over sequence would be nice. Oh, well, screw this. Oh. <laughs> Fortunately, the paralysis wears off and you seem to be back to normal. There's a bunch more spore of these things over there. And we want to get some. You take possession of one of the spores, being careful not to mistakenly break it open. I need to remember this. Um, these spores release something that causes paralysis, and it's not lethal, and it's only temporary. Uh, those are important facts to remember for later in the game. Let's check out what's to the north here. Ooh. You can see a little guy across the clearing, picking some sort of berries from a bush. They look like ordinary berries from here. Nevertheless, I want some, but this thing on the floor looks sort of dangerous. The ground is soiled, no. It appears to be some kind of overdeveloped root. There is a pulsating grove near the middle, which is connected to several meters of root-like appendages. Something tells me that's not safe. Root monster of death. Yep, not safe. 
Good. You've succeeded in establishing contact with one of this planet's life forms, and it looks like you'll get to examine it up close and personal. The giant, root looking thing is giving you a guided tour of its digestic s digestive system. What you experience next is too horrible to describe. Let's just say that you die as a result. You are dead. Trust me. It may please you to know that during the night you didn't digest well. For a while, gastric distress made it extremely unpopular with the other root monsters. Yep. That is a deadly root monster already. Alright, whatever. Um, but I do want some of those berries, and unfortunately the only way to get to them is through here. So this, we'll have to go through this maze without touching them, and the obvious way to try and do that is by saving often. So, let's try this. This is the really tight spot. Yep, that didn't go well. Now it did. Alright, just a little bit further. And we're out. Fortunately, we also have to go back. Let's look at the berries. The berries hanging on the bush look quite juicy and smell very pungent. Hmm. Let's get some berries. It looks like he's eating them, but anyway. You snack some of the odoriferous red berries. Can we eat them? You get them near your mouth and notice the pungent scent. Wisely, you change your mind. Okay. It's unlike Roger to be that wise, but anyway. And we can't get out this way. It's again, it's again, this foliage is too dense. So we'll have to make our way back through the root monster maze. Whoever thought it was a good idea to put this kind of thing in an adventure game, I don't know, but he's deserving of those lobotomies that the uh, death message keeps talking about. Okay, here's a tight spot again. And I got through! Yay! Well, rest shouldn't be too hard. Hopefully. That doesn't stop me from still saving on every corner. And it's a good thing I did! Yay! We made it! That was uh, a lot better. Well, let's see where else we can go. It seems we're running out of locations. I like the eyeballs in the foliage. Looks like we're being watched. Let's see if we can go to the right here. Uh, we've already been to the right at the bottom of the screen, but you actually end up at uh, a different location if you go up top. And I think it helps if I type this in advance. Not sure if I remember that right. You see a small fleshy being. He appears to be rubbing something on his body. Yep. It's that creature again and he's going across the swamp. Well, I guess that means the swamp is safe to traverse then. You're standing at the edge of an eerie swamp. You can hear the croaks and moans of swamp life, none of which you are eager to encounter. Well, if the creature could go through here, then so can we, right? Well, we'll have to find out in the next video. Welcome back. 
uh, the only place we've left to go is through this swamp, and, um, yuck. I do think that uh, the creature went through here, so I'm guessing it must be safe, even though it looks differently. Oh, what the hell? That does not look good. Um, uh-oh. That's not a good thing. You feel something slimy clamp down on your leg and pull you beneath the surface. You struggle in vain to free yourself. Unfortunately, your desire to breathe results in the intake of a large quantity of swamp water. If the lack of oxygen hadn't killed you, the taste of the putrid water would have. You're dead. Better luck next time, Roger Wilco. Well... Okay, so the swamp isn't safe to uh, traverse. But it was rubbing something on its body, and uh, we saw it pick berries earlier, so let's try and uh, rub the berries, which we know are very pungent, so maybe that will work. Well, we got points for doing it, which is usually a good sign. You rub the berries all over your body. You now smell like a walking ammonian inhale. Inhalant. Hopefully the uh, swamp creature will uh, think that is quite distasteful. Let's see. Here it comes. Oh no! Ah, hey, wait. You feel something slimy clamp down on your leg and almost as suddenly spit you back out. You distinctly hear the sounds of aquatic gagging and retching. Evidently, you had a bad aftertaste from the berries. Well, that's good then. Um, let's see. You've stepped into a deeper area of the swamp. You're forced to swim. Hmm, interesting. Could there be, uh, something here? You've gotten out of the deep spot and are back on your soggy feet. Well, because it doesn't appear to be an instant kill, there must be a reason why there is a deep spot there. Let's see if we can find anything down there. Being careful to hold our breath. You take a deep breath, filling your lungs to near bursting, and head for the depths below. Okay, now we do have a limited supply of oxygen, so some expediency is needed. This is also a very cruel puzzle, because... How the hell are you supposed to figure out that you can dive there? You have to be lucky to even just walk past that deep spot, otherwise you'd never notice. Oh, looks like we're out of it. Interesting. You're in a small grotto below the swamp. A strange light dances off the walls of this cave. Its origin? A glowing gem, situated on top of a boulder. Ooh, shiny thing! Misa wants! Look, shiny thing. Damn it. You do not possess the designated item. Hmm. Well, let's get it first then. You take the glowing gem. The glowing gem provides a gentle illumination. Well, that could be useful if we're ever in a dark place. Well, let's uh, swim back. Once again, you wisely take in a load of air and head below. Swim back out. Why the hell are you swinging horizontal through, or uh, vertically through this cave? I don't know. Look a bit of a weird way of swimming, but anyway. Blip, 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 blip. Right, well, at least we didn't have to spend an entire chapter underwater, unlike um, a certain April Ryan I know of. You've gotten out on out of the deep spot and are back on your soggy feet. Well, it's not the only thing that's soggy now. I guess we're completely soggy. We are well and truly sogged. Um, where am I? Oh. Back there! Stuck behind the tree. Well, looks like we're nearly out of the, uh... Swamp. You're at the east end of the swamp area. Forest extends to the east. 
Well, let's see, we need to find that landing platform, I guess, if we want to get back off this uh, planet. You're in a slightly forested area. A large fissure nearby seems to lead straight down. Hmm. Well, that's not a good thing. Our path is blocked. The fissure appears to be very deep with sheer sides. You can make out no details as it darkens towards the bottom. Um, what about this tree here? This tree is dead. The bark must have fallen off years ago. It bears no foliage. Well, maybe we can climb it and... I don't know, uh... Jump from the top? I don't know. It sounds like a long shot, but... It's not like we have much choice here. This tree is dead and seems to be free of the slick secretions some of the others generate. You begin to shimmy your way up the snack. Crack. Mm. Oof. Holy log jams, Batman. You almost ate the big one. Wow, that was a stroke of luck. The log is firmly seated between the sides of the fissure. I would not like to try that in real life. Well, at least we made it. Well, I'm sure we'll be perfectly free from harm now. What do we have here? You're in a thinly forested area just east of the fissure. Well, uh, looks perfectly safe. So, of course, it isn't. Yikes, you have been snared, suspended above the ground. You are unable to move freely. Um, that's not a good thing. After a while, the cerebral fireworks begin. Capillaries begin to burst under the strain. You pass out. Once again, time passes. Yeah, it would be a lot weirder if it went backward. And then, some more time passes. While unconscious, you have the strangest of dreams. You imagine that your name is Larry. You are wearing something known as a leisure suit. Apparently made of 100% synthetic materials and proving to generate large amounts of static electricity. While prowling a locale known as the Land of the Lounge Lizards, you spend your time badgering women on the area of the area to participate in bizarre mating rituals such as... Just then, consciousness begins to creep in. That's the thing with dreams, they always end before the good part. Well, uh... You have just witnessed another plug for another Sierra game, Leisure Suit Larry. Sierra does love, love to uh, put plugs in their games. Your head begins to clear, and you realize that you have been imprisoned. Your captor appears to be that large oaf sitting near the fire. Hmm. Let's take a look around. You're in a well-hidden clearing. It is surrounded on three sides by large, smooth rock formations with brush out to the north. A cage is below one of the formations. You are currently in it. Yes, and that part of the predicament is one we want to um, solve. We have a key card, but somehow I doubt that's going to work. I'm guessing the one with the key is the guard. Well, uh, there's more to the description. In the center, a campfire burns. One has to wonder about the purpose of a fire during a warm day such as this. A rope sits on one of the boulders. A large beast is nearby. Something tells me the purpose of that campfire has something to do with why we were captured, which means we'd better work fast if we want to get the hell out of here. I'm going to save here. Um, Hunter. Looks like the cage is locked. It's screwed looking but effective. The rust would prevent anything but the correct key from turning it. Um, break the lock. Escape. Help! 
Help! What do I do? Well, we'll have to get out of here in the next video. Welcome back. We are trapped by this hunter. And we need to get out of the cage and get rid of him. Well, let's see what we have at our disposal. Um, we've got a supporter and a puzzle. Uh, all of these things are just useless. Except maybe the spore. After all, we passed out when we breathed in whatever came out of there. So maybe this thing will too. So let's try that. Throw the spore. Luckily he didn't search us or anything. Upon impact with the ground, the spore opens and spews its dust into the air. The hunter falls to the ground, paralyzed. Yay! Wait, we're still in the cage. We can't get out! You search the large, not to mention uncleansed, body of the hunter. You find a key, which might unlock the cage. Other than that, you find only a few assorted parasites clinging to him. However, we're too far away. You can't reach it. The hunter is too far away. Well, that sucks. And of course, like us, he also wakes up again. You have caused the guard to be paralyzed. I don't think he is too pleased with you. Indeed, he is not. The hunter has decided that it's a perfect day for a barbecue. As he slowly turns you over the fire, you begin to turn a beautiful golden brown. Death follows at an agonizingly long distance. Way to go, wingnut! Once again, you've demonstrated your inability to sustain life. You quickly glance around the room to see if anyone saw you blow it. Thank you for playing Space Quest 2, Roger Wilco. You've been a swell to watch. Have a nice day. Why, thank you. Well, okay, we've seen the death message before, of course. I keep expecting them to be different, but uh, they're not. Okay, well, um, while he's trying to eat us, we'll just uh, restore, actually. We need him to get closer so we can get that key. But he's ignoring us. Well, maybe we can uh, get his attention. The hunter seems to ignore you. Well... Let's just keep buggering him. The hunter stands and takes a long look in your direction. Its face, though strange in its own right, bears an expression one might see on a freak show patron. He moves closer. And now we quickly have to throw the spore before he opens the cage and eats us again. Upon impact with the ground, the spore opens and spews its dust into the air. The hunter falls to the ground, paralyzed. But now he's closer, so this time we should be able to get that key. You reach through the bars and take possession of the key. Indeed. Okay, unlock cage. You slip the key into the lock and give it a turn. The lock snaps open. And we still have to open the door for some reason. You open the cage door. I don't think he'll come round again. For some strange reason, this time he won't. But still, uh, let's try not to linger too long. There's uh, something on this rock here. Okay. You're in a well-hidden clearing. It is surrounded on three sides by a large, smooth rock. Formations... Uh, smooth rock formations with uh, brush to the north. A cage is below one of the formations. In the center a campfire burns. One has to wonder about the purpose of a fire during a warm day such as this. A rope sits on one of the boulders. A large beast is lying on the ground. I think I already did the looking, but anyway. Um, well, it's this rope that we're interested in. Rope is always useful. You grab the rope. Good. Well, let's uh, 
head on out. I'm actually going to save here. Okay, I like using exclamation points. Let's just leave. Hey, it's the landing pad. And the shuttle is leaving. You're at the edge of a forest. The boundary is a sheer cliff at the east side of the area. In the distance you see a landing platform. Possibly the one which welcomed you to this strange, lush world. The shuttle in the distance looks like it would have been a nice thing to have right now. And the reason I saved here is because... If you stay here too long, or if you move too far north, I think, um, they'll just completely blindside you. Like that. Drats! Vol's troops have tracked you down and passed sentence for your escape. Tough luck, eh? Another senseless tragedy. Indeed. Quite senseless. Oh, I don't know if they did that um, on if they did that just to have another random death or to discourage people from um, trying to find a way down here because this is not the way we're gonna reach the landing pad. Can we look at the platform? The landing platform, raised slightly above the nearby treetops, appears to be an active place with shuttles coming and going. The forest between the base of the cliff and the platform is densely populated with all manner of flora. They must have a lot of traffic going in and out. Well, there were supposed to be mines here, which we were going to work in, after all. So I guess they have to transport cargo and stuff. Okay, well, this time let's not w wander into the line of sight of Fohol's uh, henchmen. And we're back on the screen with the trap, although this time there is no trap. He didn't reset it after we um, sprung it. Oh, <laughs> damn. I nearly fell off there. So, what do we do? Well, there's only one real way to go, and that is down. Something which we couldn't do before, but now we can because we have a rope. There's actually two things you can do. You can tie the rope to the tree stump, or you can try the rope to the log. If you tie it to the tree stump, you'll fall, because it, it'll break. The correct solution is to uh, tie it to the log, and you want to do that while on the log. There we go. We have a nice way down. And again, I'm going to save here. Not because I want to show you a death sequence here, but because I might die by accident. Okay. Wow, that's stuck between a rock and a monkey. Obviously, there is a cave on the left side, which is where we want to go. But this rope is just going down. Nice waterfalls in the background, by the way. You are in a sheer-sided gorge, suspended on a rope between the two rock faces. There is a mammoth member of the local fauna to the right. It looks to be in constant need of nourishment, hence the look being cast you. Is that correct, grammar? Press F6 to release grip on rope. Well, that is going to end in uh, a sudden drop, I think. A long drop with a sudden stop at the end, which is not what we want. Now, can we look at the waterfall in the background? No. I think it looks like a waterfall. Then again, with these graphics, could be anything. What we want to do is reach the ledge on the left, which we can do by swinging. You need to be further down the rope to cause a good swing. Okay. Is that far enough? Seems to be. Now the trick is to let go when you have enough momentum to reach the ledge, but before that beast is able to grab you. And you get a, at least some warning what's going to happen, because he'll try and grab you, but fail. Do that once, twice, and then let go, 
and you'll make it. I think on the third time, he will actually uh, catch you. I think you can also make the ledge even after once, uh, after he tries to grab you once. But he does need to try to grab you at least once. If you let go before that, you'll not make the legend fall. Well, I guess uh, we have to see if this cave can lead to our uh, escape from this world. Hopefully we'll find a path through the mountain down to that landing platform. But we'll have to find out in the next video. Welcome back! Through cunning, wit, and mostly dumb luck, Roger has managed to escape the hunter, climb down this gorge, and reach this ledge on the left. So, we can go into this cave. At least he'll stop roaring. Oh, looks a bit dark in here. Being as dark as it is in here, there isn't much to see. You do see light coming from the east. Yes, because that's where we entered. Look at me. I'm just a floating eyeball. A pair of floating eyeballs. Look. Yay. Well, I know my Sierra games, and I know that going into a dark cave without a source of light usually ends badly. But we do actually have a source of light. Namely, the glowing gem that we picked up in the cave underneath the swamp. So if we hold that gem, it will illuminate our path. You take out the gem and hold it in your palm. The room is illuminated by its glow. You hear a small shriek and the sound of many footsteps moving away from you. So hopefully that means that whatever might have been waiting for us in the dark is now no longer a threat. So, let's uh, move into this cave. Um... Okay, on that side apparently. And, ooh, the ground below your feet disappears. You tumble down through the darkness. Yes, that's actually supposed to happen. That was a rather spectacular entrance. All systems seem to be intact, though. Ooh, it's those things. The dwellers mumble something. The translator responds with, Follow us, Beam Paul. They hurry away. Hmm. I guess we should follow them, but let's take our gem, which we lost here. We might still need it at some point. Ooh, more of them. Welcome to our canyon. You look to be from out of town. Well spotted. He looks like he's their king or leader or something. On behalf of all of us, I would like to thank you for saving our compadre from the hunters. You're welcome to stay in the canyon as long as you like. When you are ready to leave, simply say the word, and my assistants will show you the only way out for a being of your size. When you leave, however, we must seal the exit behind you for our own protection. Goodbye, and good luck. All right, then. Nice looking uh, canyon here. You're at the south end of the gorge bottom. There are more odd rock formations here. There are still more of those little pink folks. Ah. Uh. Oh. That worked. These guys are quite fleshy and pink looking. They don't speak, they just giggle. Oh, okay. Well, uh, there's not an awful lot we can do here in this canyon. We already got our gem back, which is the main reason why they just don't send you straight out. And... I guess that means we should say the word. Which causes them to open the passage, and we can go down. Hopefully this uh, will lead us to where we want to go. Ooh. What the hell? 
No, don't adjust your monitor. We have taken control. Nice uh, reference there. There is no light source in the vicinity. You couldn't see guano if it, if it was pasted to your proboscis. Hmm, well, good thing we got our gem back then. You can't maneuver with a gem in your hand. Okay, and this is probably the most obscure puzzle in the entire game. I don't know how you're supposed to figure this out. I mean, this game is still from the era when I, my English wasn't actually good enough to play these kinds of games without a walkthrough, so I used to walk through. So I never... Oh, what the hell? Suddenly, an inhuman guttural moan echoes through the narrow caves. You're not sure which direction it came from. The only thing you do know for sure is that you've just soiled your undergarment. Well, I guess that's uh, why they closed off the cave entrance then. There's something lurking in here. And I think it's actually a cave squid. What we need to do, though, is get some light. And a gem is actually the answer. But like I said, how you're supposed to figure this out, I don't know. What you're supposed to do is hold gem in mouth. Ah, better. Not a great deal better, but better. And now we get a maze, and quite a dangerous maze at that. Because there is the uh, cave squid if you go down the wrong way. Let's see if I can remember where we need to go. And uh, let's save. Warning. Cave squid. Whatever. Okay, in case I don't remember it, let's save. I think I have to go right here, and then down at the next one. <laughs> I like the little, uh, the way they showed uh, the, r the gem being in his mouth. Okay, down this one. Then right again here. And I think... Well, we have to go back... I uh, have to go down here because we can't go anywhere. Uh... Hmm. I'm gonna guess right. Um, not that one, that one, and then left. And down here. Oh, not down there. Is it the second one, or... I'm gonna... Guess it is, in case it isn't, and in case we run into squid. Okay, I should have just gotten a map instead of trying to do this by memory. But I think we're on the right path. Yay! You have an opportunity to stand and spare your tender knees. The crystal clear water gives off a gentle glow. In abundance, it is able to light the room. You take the glowing gem from between your aching jaws. You notice it is overly moist as you slip it into your pocket. Right then. Nice looking place. This place is amazing. Beautiful subterranean w waterfalls and cascades drop before you, filling the air with billions and billions of tiny misty droplets which tickle the cilia. The air is thick with a revitalizing humid freshness. This message is also getting a little thick. Hmm. The narrator is getting self-referential. The water is clear except for very slight cloudiness. It appears to be luminous. In fact, the water's soft glow seems to be providing the light here. How nice! At least we can see where we're going, then. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Underground river. Not that this bit is particularly dangerous, but anyway. Another chamber. You are swimming in the swiftly moving water of this underground river. The river forks near the back of the cave. The glow from the water softly illuminates the room. I don't understand how the water flow works here, because there were waterfalls coming in from the left, and there's waterfalls coming in here, so where does it actually get, go out? Hmm. Interesting. Uh-oh. This does not look good. Ah! Splat! After caroming off of a pair off of a pair of rock outcroppings, you find a final resting place at the base of the falls. Well, that didn't work. I guess we'll have to try and locate the correct path in the next video. Welcome back. Well, we tried going uh, down the left tunnel last time, which didn't work so well. So let's try the right one now. Hopefully it'll end better. Currents here just don't make any sense, because it was actually going down in both directions on, s on the left. And here it's also going down on both directions into the waterfall and down the waterfall on the left. If you understand it, please explain it to me, because I don't. As you enter another of the mysterious subterranean chambers, you realize that the water is now racing towards a giant whirlpool in the middle of the area. You are caught in a strong current, powerless to alter your cur course. Hmm. That's not a good thing. Then if this isn't the right way either, then what is? Your body is sucked down until, finally, you are able to resist no more and must yield to the overwhelming force. Oh, hey, I guess this was the way out. Jeez, that was quite a trip. Peering around, you find yourself back in the open again. I wonder if this is the, the way that those creatures wanted me to take. If so, they could have at least told me to take the right fork. Rather than just... Or, or, and told me the directions in the cave, actually, rather than send me into a maze with deadly monsters. Could have been eaten by a Gru! Well, at least we are in a nice part of the forest. You're in a pool. It is fed by a waterfall which spews from a strange rock face. An actual face. An ugly one at that is carved into the rock. It must be hundreds of years old. Yeah, it is actually a face. I wonder if the, those tiny guys carved that, or if it was someone else. Okay. Well, it looks like we've reached the end of the river. You're in a little clearing which is surrounded by large boulders and impenetrable brush. There's water, in which you entered, at the bottom left. You can just see a landing platform in the distance. Oh good, we've made it, so we can escape! And possibly also try and stop Vohol, because I guess that's our secondary objective here. We can't let him uh, release those salesmen, after all. Unfortunately, this appears to be a dead end, as the description said. The foliage is too dense for you to go through. And, well, we're not getting through here. Now, there is actually no way out. So what do we do? And this is another puzzle where I have no idea how you're supposed to figure this out, except just try every possible thing that you can possibly do in the cave. What you're supposed to do here is blow the whistle that we got from the Jipazoid Novelty Company calls a Labian Terror Beast. You give the whistle a toot. It makes an odd sound. 
Last time we tried that, nothing happened, but now you hear an incredible whirring and grinding sound coming from the north. Suddenly, a labian terror beast buzzes into the room like a tornado, and he looks like he could do as much damage as one. He put the Taz in Tasmania, come to Tasmania, down in Tasmania, we need you! Okay, um, may have gotten the lyrics wrong. Anyway, it should be pretty clear that the labian terror beast uh, is supposed to be like a Tasmanian devil. And... If you do nothing, he'll attack you. And again, a completely random solution to this particular problem. You have to throw the cubics root puzzle at him. How the hell do you figure that out? I have no idea. The beast appears interested in your offering. Curiosity gets the better of him as he reaches down for it. He seems quite perplexed by the puzzling plastic polyhedron. Nice alliteration there. And now he's playing with the puzzle. Boy, he certainly seems interested in that puzzle. Well, I hope he has better luck at solving it than Roger would have had. Okay, one thing you can do here, get rock. You pick up a small rock generated during the Terror Beast's grand entrance. Because we'll need it. And here we are at the uh, landing pad. I'm just going to save here again, just in case. There's actually a couple of ways you can do that. It is actually possible to just sneak by him while his back is turned. That's quite uh, complicated, though, because he looks over quite often. You have to be really quick in getting to the door. Uh, in order to make that work. You can also try and throw the rock to create a diversion and then when he's checking that out, get in there. I think you can actually also uh, sneak up via this side. So first head to this bush and then head behind there and then walk this way. However, the solution that gives you the most points and also the most violent one is another one of these completely off-the-wall puzzle thingies. Use supporter to throw rock. No? How do I do that? Uh, I think it's just sling rock, maybe. Yes, there we go. You sent the rock flying into the bushes. You hear it land. Wait, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, that's the diversion tactic, but that's not what I intended to do. Okay, I want to sling rock at guard then. Which you cannot do without using the suspender. There we go. You cleverly use the athletic supporter to sling the rock at the guard. It makes serious contact with the side of his head. We like the way you think. He drops like a lead parakeet. Okay. The ripe thought of impact is momentarily sickening. He is perfectly still. That gives you the most points, and is also the most gruesome, and therefore the most fun. Alrighty. Can we search him? You find nothing. The guard is quite unconscious. It looks like he'll be out for a while. Ah, oh, we didn't even kill him. Well, let's get in. Hopefully there's a shuttle there. The only visible means of opening the door is the keycard slot. Well, luckily, we got a keycard. Um, what? This parser is a bit hard to figure out sometimes. You slide the keycard into the slot, then remove it. Sierra was never really known for having the best possible parsers in their text adventures. As soon as the elevator door closes behind you, the platform on which you rest begins to rise. Yes, that's called an elevator. And there's a shuttle! Lucky us. You're on a landing platform. A shuttle sits quietly nearby. 
you see lush growth all around. And yes, of course, you can fall off this and die. Do you even need to ask that? I mean, it's still a Sierra game. It's not like a rubber tree is going to save you. Okay, um, well, let's uh, enter the shuttle. Let's see if we can uh, open that. You recall from when you land that the entry hatch being on the rear left of the shuttle. You'll have to move it a little. Oh, on the rear left, I guess that's over here then. No? The other left? Yes. The left from the point of view of the shuttle's orientation, not left of the screen. Uh, whatever. We are inside, that's what matters. You're inside a shuttle cockpit. There's an instrument panel before you. Between your legs is a throttle. You can see the local tre treetops. How nice. Uh, pull the throttle. That has no effect now. Okay. Look at the panel. Everything looks automatic. The panel is loaded with, fr uh, with clusters of system status indicators. There's a power button, an attitude dial, and an ascent thruster button. Okay, well, let's uh, turn the power on, I guess. Well, that helps. We'll see if we can get uh, out of here in the next video. Welcome back! We finally made it to the shuttle. Now we can escape this planet and m maybe do something about Vohol too. So, uh, well, we got the power on. There's no horizontal control until minimum attitude has altitude has been achieved. Yeah, we don't want horizontal control, we, we want vertical control. There was a, an attitude dial. L look at that. The attitude dial sets throttle control to either vertical attitude control or horizontal attitude control. It's currently set to horizontal attitude control. Okay, then we should turn it to put it to VAC. The attitude dial is now set to VAC. Is that gonna work? Um, I think you actually need to pull it. Oh, eh. Throttle! Vertical controls are now ineffective. And that's because you also need to push the thruster button. There we go. The shuttle begins to vibrate as the ascent thrusters ignite. And finally, it works. Ascent thrusters ready. Attitude system, vertical control. Forward is descent, back is ascent. Press A key. Oh, we just need to uh, wait until we get out of here. Man, they really made this shuttle idiot-proof. So if there's anything that's the test of whether or not a system is idiot-proof is to try and let Roger Wilco use it. By the way, if you forget your name, the game allows you to uh, recall it by typing who. You're Roger Wilco, don't you remember? <laughs> That's, of course, because you can choose your own name. You can see what you entered that way. You're off the planet! Good work, Roger Wilco! Of course, it's used in the dialogue so often that there's not really any point in using who. A tone sounds. A soft, synthesized voice notes that adequate altitude has been achieved. Ascent thrusters are now ineffective. The monitor draws your attention again. Minimum altitude achieved. Attitude system. Uh, the rest is the same. And we actually want to... Um, Turn the dial again for horizontal attitude mm -hmm. control, now that we are at minimum attitude. And we can now see on the monitor that forward is ahead and back is reverse. Okay. Well, push throttle, let's go forward! Boldly going forward, because we can find reverse. Wait, we can find reverse. Oh well, we're still going forward. Where the hell are we going? Should we plot a course or anything? No. Let's just go straight. I'm sure that's a good strategy. Uh-oh. The screens are suddenly splashed with the incredibly horrible image of Sludge Vohol. Hello, Roger Wilco. I've been waiting for you. Once again, my subordinates have failed me. Anyway, it looks like you'll be visiting me again soon. Don't bother trying to pilot the vehicle. 
I have taken control. You will be arriving at my command post shortly. I anxiously await your arrival. He closes with a chilling laugh. His image is frozen on the screens. The ship changes course as, it, as if it had a life of its own. All you can do is hang on. That's actually true, because there's nothing you can do with the throttle. As Vowell stated, nothing works. We just turn the power off. Not now. Yes, now. Damn it. I guess we'll just, just have to wait. You feel the ship bank. Which looks surprisingly as if it's just reversing direction. But anyway. Hey. We've seen that before. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Through the window you see your apparent destination. Vohol's asteroid. Even though just a millisecond ago that apparently wasn't in view. Well, I guess we're boned. I mean, if Vohol is smart, he'll just have a whole bunch of guards waiting for us and just immediately shoot us. The massive bay doors meet, jarring the entire vehicle bay. As you step down, the shuttle door slams shut behind you. You're quite surprised not to find several of Vohol's guards waiting to greet you. You begin to ponder what the twisted scientists might have in store for you. Quite. Well, now that we're here, and apparently not dead yet, Asteroid Fortress. When I grow up, I want to have an Asteroid Fortress. Well, let's see uh, what's down here. The door behind you closes solidly. Uh-oh. A barrier springs up before you. Another barrier stands in your way. You feel the floor shift below you. It's moving to the left. Oh no, help! What do we do? We have nothing that can help us here. Oh well. Just commit suicide. Imagine, if you will, taking a bath in sulfuric acid and using pumice for a washcloth. After that bit of displeasure passes, it gets much worse as the acid slowly eats its way to the last critical organs. Finally, mercifully, death takes you. Well, I guess that's why there weren't any guards. He set up a trap. But, like all Bond villains before him, there's actually a way to avoid this trap. Why these kinds of villains never just shoot you, I don't know. Oh well, let's look around, actually. You are standing on a suspended platform inside the cavernous vehicle bay which has been carved out of the asteroid. Narrow walkways lead off in almost all directions. Watch your step. Yes, falling down here is quite easy. Let's see. Hey, that looks like an elevator. There's also an access tunnel which we cannot reach. You're in a rather large room to the west of the vehicle bay. There are two elevated walkways here. One leads to an elevator in the middle. The other leaves the room to the right and left. Well, let's see what we can do with this elevator. You're in a small capsule-shaped enclosure. Above the door is a digital readout which reads level 1. The only other feature is a rectangular panel. The panel has a vertical row of four buttons. There is some small engraving at the bottom edge of the panel. The engraving reads, Bobco Lift Division, a subsidiary of Bobco, Inc. Universally famous makers of Nats hamster tape. Okay. Nice to know. If that's your trip, we've got the grip. Okay. Are there any buttons? The buttons look ordinary. Each button has a word next to it. In order, they are 1, 3, 4, and 5. Hey, what happened to 5? Uh, what happened to 2, actually? I don't know why I said 5 there. Hey, wake up, there is no button 2. Alright, well, we'll go to the third level then. Uh, 
and the level indicator also skips level 2, so I guess there really is none. I'm gonna save here again, because dying here is quite easy. You have the funny feeling you're being watched. Yes, there's cameras watching us. This section of hall dead ends. There is an elevator on the back wall and a camera attached to the ceiling. There is a surveillance camera m mounted on the ceiling. It looks to be quite basic. It appears to be pointing right at you. Oh well, nothing we can do about that. Uh, that's the thing I hate here. The stupid floor cleaners. There's no way to get around them. And occasionally you just get really blindsided by them and have to backtrack to a safe spot. Because just because it's going in the opposite direction now is no guarantee that it won't just come back when we go to the next screen. Hey, a door. You're in a tubular hallway. There's a door on the side wall. Well, let's open it with the button. Aha! You know a janitorial closet when you smell one. Almost at once you sense an emptiness, a melancholy longing. You begin to feel homesick. Well, at least we're safe from the floor cleaner here. It is actually a floor cleaner. I didn't look at it, but if we see it again, then I'm sure we will. Then I'll uh, try and look at it. Well, we'll have to see what's in this closet in the next video. Welcome back. We're in Vohol's Asteroid Fortress. And we found a janitorial closet. It's quite dark in here. However, you do find a plunger. Well, that might be useful. And... I th think that's all. Let's just hope that stupid floor cleaner doesn't get in our way again. Except for some small windows, this area is much like all the other interior sections of the asteroid. How nice. We made it to the other side without getting caught by the robot, which is nice. Um, it's not really uh, health and safety compliant now, is it, to have a floor cleaner robot that kills you if it runs you over. Uh, well, anyway, there's two other floors, four and five, and I'm actually going to go to five first. Why? Because I feel like it. Also, because I have an actual reason for it. Alright, well, there's still dangers of, uh, of floor cleaners here, so I'm just going to save. Better safe than sorry, after all. You never know if it just happens to show up right when you're at the edge of the screen. Hmm, what's this? No breakthroughs in, in material design to report. It's just one of the many tube-like sections of this custom asteroid. Okay. No comment about the panels on the wall. Hmm. This looks... suspicious. The hallways on this level are the same as above, with the exception of some type of cages. An occasional strange noise is heard. The smell here is stifling. Apparently the holding cells are not well kept. There is a door on the side wall. Okay, well, let's uh, check the door first. It's quite dark in here. There is a small waste basket. On the floor next to it is a pair of crusty work overalls. Okay. Aren't you amazed by how much stuff an adventure game hero can carry? You've just got to know how to pack. And get the overalls as well. 
You pick up the overalls. They are very small and quite worn out, not to mention filthy, and, no u and of no use to you. You toss them back on the floor, and you set them down, something falls on the floor. Okay, what is it? You see some filthy overalls, and a lighter. Ooh, a lighter. That could be useful! And, actually, I'm just gonna save over this. You can see these big hands, there's some kind of creature in the cage, and of course, it kills you! Youch, you feel alarmingly dense. Apparently, you are a prime focal point for some aggression channeling by one of the caged creatures. Your compressed composition indicates that your attacker possesses considerable strength, a good guy to avoid in the future. Of course, you are damaged beyond repair and the game must end. You've made quite a bit of progress, though. Don't start screwing up now. Okay, well... You can actually get by him. The trick is just to walk at the bottom of the screen. Oh no! One of the cells is opening! Who knows what unspeakable horror waits behind those steel bars? I do. You're not in immediate danger here. Um, keep reusing this save game. I'm gonna let this happen. Hey, it looks, it looks like the alien from Aliens! Oh, yuck! A dark and spiny beast with massive red lips grabs you up. After a longing glance, proceeds... Don't read further the phrase French kiss bothers you to plant a very moist French kiss on you. You are left quite stunned. Hey, that didn't kill me! And that's peculiar. Now, of course, if you've seen aliens, you might have some idea of what's going to happen. And this is not something you want to let him do. I want to look at it, actually. It's a dark, prehistoric-looking beast with plates covering its body. One outstanding feature is a pair of gigantic red lips. Because what happens if you let this thing kiss you, even though you don't die immediately? Oh, there's another critter there. Um, of course, he won't get killed by it. If you let it kiss you, you will die right at the end of the game. <laughs> Made it. <laughs> Right before the end of the game, something will come bursting out of your stomach, which, if you've seen Alien, you might have expected. Another nice thing from Sierra. Making the game unwinnable by something as simple as that. Although, if you've played any Sierra games whatsoever, thinking that you could just get away with being kissed by some weird alien would be a bit naive. Anyway, um... Still, there's a danger of the floor cleaner, so... We're gonna save again. And there's another door. Made it! There's an automated floor waxer moving down the corridor. The name plaque reads the Toledo Buffmaster, another fine product from Helmet Master Enterprises. Looks sort of like a helmet. Okay, well, what's this closet? It's quite dark in here. On the floor, you notice a glass cutter. Oh, well, that could be useful. This really is the the height in lazy uh, scenery design, isn't it? Just Corridors that are all the same. Hey, look, bathrooms. It's another one of those tubular holes. There are two doors. I'm gonna go in the women's bathroom. Haha! <laughs> Try and stop me. Wait a second. Both doors end up in the same place! It's a unisex ba bathroom. And from the looks of it, a unispecies bathroom. You have stepped into a porcelain palace of sorts. It is obviously a restroom. A place which, in an interesting fashion, serves to exhibit the physical diversity of the universe. The walls are covered in an easy-to-hose-down synthetic material. Attached to them, in various locations, are devices designed to efficiently collect waste products from the life forms which are able to physically match up to them. On the back wall are stalls. Three of them are in use, judging by the various feet, which show, be uh, sorry, which show beneath the stall doors. To the left are sinks. 
There's something you can do here, which I don't remember if it actually kills you or not. So, let's just save. Well, Roger Wilco, I guess you'll be paying methane a little more respect in the future. If Mr. Science were here, he would have explained that open flame and high concentrations of methane gas don't mix. Since you're dead, you'd best get to restoring. Okay, it does kill you. I thought it did. Just wasn't sure. And that's why I wanted to go to level 5 first, so I could get the lighter. So I could do this. Alrighty then. Well, let's see if we can actually do something useful here. Like, uh, take a shit. You slide your uniform pants down and settle onto the cool ring. You go through whatever motions might be normal for you during this act. Refreshed, you grab your pants and compose yourself. How nice. Parser is actually quite volatile in what it lets you type to do that. There's numerous options. The inside of the stall is a sight to behold. There's writing of various languages entered on the walls. The floor has an interesting coating of some type of congealed dreck. It appears that the toilet may have been white once. A toilet paper dispenser hangs on one wall. Can we read what's written on the walls? The writing etched on the wall is in various languages. One large message reads... Here I sit lonely hearted, had to bolt, but only darted. Are there more? Yes. T. Ben. T. Bendro Heisen. Oh, I, I get it. Ha ha ha. Chemistry joke. Was here. Are there only two of them? No. Came in here to unleash the beast, just to find my colon creased. Fohol sucks! Ain't that right? Do we have all of them? No. Ken was here. So was L, but we had to repaint afterwards. <laughs> Talking, of course, Ken Williams, the owner of Sierra, and L. Lowe, the guy who made Leisure Suit Larry. Uh, uh, Leisure Suit Larry. Sir Graham cross dresses! Who'd have thought? Sir Graham is, of course, the king from King's Quest. For a good time, call Jerry. Ask for Leonard. Um, okay. Do I want to know? Fohol's mother wears stellar patrol boots. Okay. I guess that's an insult. Fohol sucks. Fohol plays text adventures. Okay, I think we got all of them. Or at least most of them. Well, we'll continue in the next video. Welcome back. Seems somebody farted it. The sound comes from one of the occupied stalls, you think? Suddenly, one of your senses downloads an extremely negative air quality report. For some reason, the name John springs to mind. Okay, enough mucking about in the toilet. Let's actually do what we came here to do, which is get some toilet paper. We're not using it to clog the toilet, like in, uh, Police Crush 3. Alright. Okay, well, he's coming from the opposite direction, so he won't be of any... ...problems... ...this time. And it's the end of the corridor, so we've exhausted our options. We have to go back to level one. And we're on the other side now. I'm just gonna... ...save... ...in case I fall down. Because we wouldn't want that to happen. Well, we've exhausted our options. Only way left to go is down here, but we already know what happens there. 
However, now we have at our disposal the tools to get out of that trap. The door behind you closes solidly. A barrier springs up before you. Another barrier stands in your way. You feel the floor shift below you. It's moving to the left. What you want to do is put the plunger on the wall. I think that's the right uh, description, but you want to wait as long as possible. Because Roger will let go after a bit. If you do it too early, you'll fall in. And hopefully I did it late enough. Using formerly uncharacteristic creativity, you apply the suction cup-like plunger to the smooth metal finish and hang on for dear life. Once a janitor, always a janitor. Let's hope we can hold on long enough. Yep, made it. Oh. You release your grip and drop back down. If you make it, you won't let go. If you do too early, then you will let go. For some strange reason. Well, we're out of the trap. But something tells me it still won't be quite safe, so let's save again. You're in an attractive tu tube-shaped region of the asteroid. There's something on the ceiling. The ceiling looks ordinary, except for some fixtures that look like sprinklers. Ah, so that's what they are. Uh-oh, that's not a good thing. Let's run to the right. Maybe we can avoid him. Uh, help? Hey, the other one's gone. Oh, it went back. Oh well, that's not gonna end well, is it? You've made the mistake of getting within what looks to be a cattle prod's length of the metal menace. An electrical contact connected to an extension arm reaches from its body and makes contact with you. That's when you begin feeling the intense burst of electrical current pulsing through your body. You quickly black out. Zap! As you can see, you amount to little more than a hill of laser-fried beans. You've come a long way, only to be torched. Keep up the fine work! Okay, well, that didn't work. We need to disable those robots somehow. Well, we've got a lighter, we've got a basket, we've got paper, and we've got sprinklers. You do the math. So, what we want to do here is put the paper in the basket, and then uh, put the basket down. and light the paper, which turns the sprinklers on, even though in real life that wouldn't work, because only the sprinkler that's actually on top of the flame would turn on, not all of them. That's something that's commonly done wrong in movies. Because obviously you don't want all of your sprinklers to go off at once, even if there's only a fire detector at one of them, because of the water damage that would cause. Anyway. While receiving a nice hosing yourself, the basket fire is extinguished. Seconds later, a loud series of pops is followed by the smell of fried electronics. Which is what we were hoping to achieve. The sprinkler sense accomplishment and sees operation. The electronic smell means that we have short circuit at the robots. Ain't that nice. I think it is. Your fire in subsequent showers seems to have shorted out the burnished bullies. And also actually something that's done wrong in movies. The fact that sprinkler water isn't usually clean. It's usually been sitting in those pipes for quite a long time. So it's pretty rancid actually. 
So if you want to try and create a diversion by holding a lighter up to a sprinkler, this will have the effect of showering you, and only you, with really dirty water, rather than actually creating a diversion. Okay, well, let's see if there's anything behind this here door. There's nothing on the left, actually. That's a dead end. You have just entered Vohol's secret chamber. The evil one himself is seated before a large console high on a platform in the center of the room. Standing obliviously ready are many of the dreaded salesman clones. So, Roger Wilco, we meet again. I must say, I'm quite impressed with your resourcefulness and tenacity. I'd love to chat, but I'm busy preparing the last of my salesman's clones for their trip to Xenon. Feel free to stick around and observe the downfall of your civilization. Ha ha ha! Okay. We'll observe then. An airy glow illuminates the large chamber. Through the massive window you can see out into deep space. Lighted consoles adorn the area behind Fohol's perch. Fohol waits at the top of the stairway. Well, a man attached to life support won't be that much of a... Uh, of a challenge, I guess. I think we can take him down. Beat him into a pulp, essentially. Going somewhere? Ha ha ha! Um, what? As soon as you step on the platform, you are struck by a beam of light emitted from a unit in the ceiling. In a matter of seconds, you are broken down into micro particles and extracted from the air. Again the beam strikes, this time blasting into a glass jar on the console. It is there that you are molecularly reconstructed in a miniaturized form. Well, I'll be darned. My miniaturization beam does work. Fohol's voice booms. In the old days I'd test these things on myself, but... As you may have noticed by my appearance, being my own guinea pig has had its disadvantages. I guess this will keep you out of my way once and for all. You'll make a nice conversation piece. With that, Vohol turns away to put finishing touches on Xenon's fate. Again, why doesn't he just kill me? It would have been so much easier and got me out of the way for good. Actually, if he hadn't kidnapped me in the beginning, we wouldn't even have been here at all, in any position to stop him. So, if we stop him, it's his own fault. Well, let's see, we're in a glass uh, thingy, glass jar. You are trapped in a glass jar, sitting on the surface of Vohol's control console. Well, we'll have to see if we can get out of the glass jar in the next video. Welcome back! We're trapped in a glass jar and miniaturized. You're trapped in a glass jar sitting on the surface of Vohol's control console. But since we have a glass cutter, I guess we can use that to get out. The newly cut pane of glass falls to the counter. Apparently, Vohol doesn't notice. Lucky us, then. You're on the surface of a console. A large, compared to you, jar sits in the middle. A hole has been cut in the side. There are some vents near the back. Well, it looks like the only way to go is left, but let's save before that. Yeah, I had some uh, trouble. That's why I already have save games. I have to redo this video. Oops. Darn, Roger Wilco. I guess his lartness got a little fed up with your meddling. You've been redesigned once again, revealing a permanent overhead view. You resemble one of those wonderfully colorful mosaics commonly found on windshields. Thanks for playing! You've been very entertaining. Okay, well that didn't work. Oh, damn it! Wrong save game. Haha. <laughs> Now you've already had a sneak peek of what comes after this, and it's another corridor, as if you wouldn't have guessed. 
Um, okay. Going left is not a good idea, then. But there's vents. Vents are always a good option. You wiggle your slim carcass through the vent. Now where are we? Judging from those two hoses coming in from outside, you guess that this is the inner workings of Vohol's life support system. A respirator pumps oxygen into his lungs, while a pump on the back wall forces blood through filters. There's also a sign on the back wall. The sign says, Caution! Press button for emergency shutoff. Ooh, I bet he won't like that. Way to go, Roger Wilco. You've just disconnected Vohol's life support system. He's a goner without it. Yay, we killed him. Hopefully. You can see Vohol struggling not... Uh, struggling to take his last few breaths. Not you again. You think you've won. He wheezes. But all you have done is to seal your own fate. He reaches up and flips a switch on the far end of the console before dropping to the floor. Dead. Yay, we killed him. But we're still tiny. I don't want to be tiny anymore. Well, now we can safely walk over here, so let's see what we have. You're walking on another section of the control console. There's a large switch on the back panel. A keyboard is at your feet. Well, the switch appears to be a on-off switch. So let's try turning it on. Reduce or enlarge. I guess this is the controls for the uh, shrinking beam. Of course, we're already tiny and we don't want to be any tinier, so let's enlarge. Oh, to type it. Sequence has begun, but not here, obviously. It's back here in the glass jar. You're once again reconstituted, this time to the correct size. You notice that the clones are gone. That's probably not a good sign. And you can see one of the screens is blinking, drawing our attention. But let's first take a look at Vohol. Vohol's dead, hulking slab of flesh is loosely arranged at the base of the chair. Let's search him. An examination of his repulsively turgid, fabric-encased mass reveals nothing other than the tubes which supplied him with blood and oxygen. You do notice the letters SHSR written in pen on the back of his left hand. Now you may know that in the movie 2001 Sp uh, Space Odyssey there was a computer named HAL 9000. If you take the letters H-A-L and add one, go to the next letter in the alphabet, you get IBM. There's a clever, clever little joke there. If you do this to this code, SHSR, you get tits. How clever. Um, let's look at the monitor. Let's see. General status, orbit decaying. Prognosis, terminal. Interior environment, okay. External temperature, critical. Auxiliary operations, clone launch, go. Oh, that's not a good thing. It's counting down to the launch. To abort launch, enter code below. Well, the code is, of course, SHSR, which we just found. Clone launch, aborted. Yay, we saved Xenon. Unfortunately, since the orbit of this asteroid is decaying, I guess that's what Vohol meant when he said that we'd just sealed our own fate, that means that we have not yet saved ourselves. By the way, tits also works as a code here. Okay, well, uh, I guess we'd better get out of here. Use these stairs over here. Use the uh, diagonal keys on the number keypad. 
Let's see, where are we now? You are walking through a clear tubular passageway which seems to wind in and out along the outer perimeter of the asteroid. There is a box mounted on the west end of this tube. Hmm. The box is actually an oxygen mask receptacle. It is currently closed. You open the box and, receive, noticing an oxygen mask, remove it and close the box. Let's wear that, just in case. Reminds me of the sewers in Police Quest 2. Except this time the danger is not actually methane gas. But something else, as you'll see. A section of the glass tubing has fractured from combined stress. The pressurized atmosphere rushes for the relative vacuum of space. I guess because the asteroid's orbit is decaying and we're entering the atmosphere, it's not a complete vacuum. Hence this phrasing. Fortunately, wearing the mask protects you from suffocation. Wow, it's almost as if I knew this would happen. You are walking through a t clear tubular passageway which seems to wind in and out along the outer perimeter of the asteroid. The planet of Labian spins nearby. You can see evidence of the de decaying orbit of the asteroid. The exterior of the asteroid is heating up from ever-increasing collisions with atmospheric molecules. A section of the glass tubing has fractured from combined stress. The pressurized atmosphere rushes for the relative vacuum of space. Let's look at Labian. Labian draws closer as the asteroid falls to the whims of its gravitational pull. Things are really heating up. I guess we'd better get out of here then. No longer needing the mask, you remove and stow it for later. Ooh! Alert! Alert! It's just another section of hole. There's a door on the back wall. That's where we came from. And... I'm going to uh, save here. That sound is getting on my nerves. Oh, damn it! Ah, I forgot. I'm going to restore. What you want to do there, before the damn robot spots you, is push the button on the doors. So I'm actually going to pre-type that. Let's see if I can actually do it in one go. It is possible, although very, very hard. No, not gonna make it. Those are escape pods. Unfortunately, that robot does not like you. Using them. 40 minutes until meltdown, the synthesized voice cheerfully announces. And you do actually have a 40 minutes time limit here. If you wait 40 minutes, you will die. Of course, this isn't going to take that long. Don't worry. I guess we could have gotten to safety with the door, but the robot is too close behind me to try that, so we'll have to go through here. This tunnel looks familiar. Yes, now we've come out here. And then the robot stops following you, which means we can go back the other way. Because now, when we go there, the door is already open, and we will be able to enter the escape pod before the uh, robot catches us. Pre-type that just in case.
This is one of those things that you'll just figure out by trial and error. The robot has apparently decided that it is permissible for you to be here, since you are in the pod already. Upon entering the escape pod, you quickly take your seat. You are seated inside one of the emergency escape vehicles. Before you lies a control panel and a viewport. Let's look at the panel. The only outstanding feature on the panel is the clearly marked launch button. Well, that's the one we need. Warning, emergency escape vehicle launch sequence has begun. Launch time, T minus eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. There we go. Phew! You're going to have to stop cutting these escapes so close, Roger Wilco. Well, you must feel pretty good right now. You stopped Vohol from carrying out his threat of salesman infestation, ultimately destroying the twisted scientist himself. You also managed to save your own skin. And just look at that score. Pretty darn impressive. But we're still missing ten points. Suddenly, a warning signal draws your attention to the oxygen meter on the front panel. It reads low and dropping fast. This is just great. You knew this was all too good, too good to be true. You have maybe five minutes of air left. Well, Roger Wilco, it was nice knowing you. Again, if you wait five minutes, you will die, but we're not going to do that. Um, I'm going to save, however. Uh, because I want to try something. We still have the oxygen mask. Good idea. Unfortunately, as you begin to put it on, you notice that the tank is empty. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I didn't know if that would kill you, so that's why I saved. Let's look around the pot. Maybe there's some way, something we can do. Now you take the time to view the interior of the pod in more detail. You see a sleep chamber against one wall. Well, I guess a sleep chamber is one way to preserve oxygen. Get closer. How much closer do you want me to get? You turn back the plexiglass cover. <laughs> what? You make the split-second decision to enter the sleep chamber. It seals automatically. Soon, you're overcome by a pleasant drowsiness. This is certainly better than suffocating. You begin to drift away into a deep sleep, with the satisfaction of you having a, of having accomplished your task. You've come through in the clutch, and you deserve a nice long rest. Now if someone would just pick you up somewhere along the way. So long, Roger Wilco, and thanks again for saving your people. Thanks for playing Space Quest 2! The end! And now we have 250 points. Yay! For now. Yes, because obviously we're not going to stay in this escape vault forever. No! Let's wait for Space Quest 3 to see how this continues. Well, that ends Space Quest 2 then. In my opinion, this is one of the lesser entries in the series. It has sometimes been called the King's Quest in Space, which is understandable considering uh, all the sections on Labia could just as easily have been part of uh, King's Quest. There really isn't as much sci-fi related humor in this one, which is a shame. It's also very, very short. But still, it has a couple of good moments. Uh, Couple of, uh, some good humor, and it introduces Vohol, the only recurring villain in the series. Yes, even though we killed him, he will be back. But that's it for now, and I'll see you again in Space Quest 3!